Good morning, students. Welcome to the eighth part of coordinate geometry. As we have seen in seventh part, we have discussed the similarity of triangles, in particular angle angle criteria for similarity, and what is ratio and how we can calculate ratio of two quantities we have, and how this concept of ratio and similarity of triangles is related to a formula, namely section formula, in the previous. part now in this part we are going to actually derive that formula which is called section formula and you will enjoy and have fun while deriving this formula i am assuring you the of that now here let us recall once again the angle angle criteria of similarity for triangles if two angles of one triangle are equal to two angles of another triangle then the two triangles are similar to each other i'll recollect once again this by taking two triangles namely triangle abc and triangle pqr if in these two triangles any two angles of this triangle abc are equal to any two angles of this triangle pqr then these two triangles will actually be similar to each other so if angle a for example i'm taking here if angle a is equal to angle p and angle b is equal to angle q then automatically these two triangles will be similar to each other I think you are wondering why I am not talking about the third angle here. As you know, the sum of three angles in a triangle is always equal to 180 degrees. If two angles of one triangle are equal to two angles of another triangle, you need not bother about the third angle because the third angles will be automatically equal to each other. Now the thing here we require is if two triangles are similar to each other, then what do we have? We already discussed this concept also in the previous part. when two triangles are similar to each other then their corresponding sides will be in the same ratio this is the important point of this derivation so i'll write i would like to recollect once again this same i'm taking the same triangle triangle abc and triangle pqr you just pause this video for a while and you write the ratio of similar triangles just as you have done in the previous part ap and ab and pqr congruent sides i mean corresponding sides and corresponding side of bc is qr and what is the corresponding side of ca it is rp so when triangle abc and triangle pqr are similar to each other automatically the ratio of corresponding sides are always equal so here ab divided by pq will be equal to bc by qr and in turn that will be equal to ca by rp so you have to keep this in your mind and then we'll go we'll go to derive the formula which are we which are we calling it as a section formula suppose you have a line segment ab at one end you have a whose coordinates are x1 y1 and at the other end you have another point b whose coordinates are x2 and y2 on this line segment we have so many points as we have seen in the seventh part we have made four children stand on that line and each child divided the line segment into a different ratio now i am taking a point p here on this line segment anywhere you can take it as you can take it anywhere on this line segment and now the aim of this uh, video is or the aim of this derivation is to get how can we find the coordinates of this point p which is dividing the line segment ab in the ratio m1 and m2 it can be 2 is to 3 1 is to 4 or 5 is to 11 whatever it is now we are going to take it as m1 and m2 now the objective of this class is to derive the formula to find the address of this point now we have to find the coordinates of this point now i have taken them as x and y so before going to that derivation let us write the coordinates so as the coordinates of a are x1 and y1 here this uh, x coordinate is x1 and y coordinate is y1 similarly i'll write it for both b and p also as you know x coordinate of b is x2 so it will be x2 here and y coordinate is y2 so this value is y2 now let me write the same thing for the point p also the x coordinate is x and the y coordinate is y now as you know to find the distance between any two points on x axis you just have to find the difference of the two x coordinates we already know this and of course we have to take the absolute value of that here i want to know the distance from x1 to x as you know on the number line 
the number on the right side is always greater than the number on the left side. So to find the difference of distance from x1 to x, I will subtract x1 from x. So from here to here it will be x minus x1. Similarly, the distance from x2 x2 is x x2 x2 is x2 minus x. So this will be x2 minus x. Similarly, I'll take the distance from y2 y1. It will be y minus y1. And from here to here, it will be y2 minus y1. So you you pause this video for a while and you try to understand this. From here to here, it is x minus x1. So from right hand side value, we are subtracting the left side value. And from here to here, it will be x2 minus x. Similarly, then on the y axis, the number on the upper side is always greater. So it will be y minus y1 here. And what is the upper value here? It is y2. So y2 minus y. So these distances are very crucial in this derivation. So you pause this video for 2 to, two to 3 seconds. Then you get these distances. Then only you resume this video. Now what I do is, I have drawn here two parallel lines to the x-axis from A and P which are shown in red. Similarly, I will draw two lines parallel to the y-axis from P and B. Then you can have this. So if you observe this, we have actually formed two triangles here. So you can see this here. Now the intersecting point of these two lines is C and here it is, I have taken it as D. Now by observing this, you can have here two triangles. Now these two triangles are very important here. That's why we have discussed the concept of similar triangles for this derivation. This is the reason because we get similar triangles in this derivation. Right now, as you know, as you can see very clearly, the distance from here to here it is actually equal to AC. So AC is equal to X minus X1. Similarly, how much will be P to D? Exactly, it is X2 minus X. So now these two values can be taken as C, P and this is actually B to G. So you try to get this. So A to C it is X minus X1 and C to P it is Y minus Y1. Just you have seen from here to here. We have taken those values only because they are equal. Now let us take only the triangles here and then let us forget about all the remaining values what is x1 and what is y1. Now here we have two triangles namely triangle ACP and triangle PGB. Now you have to take them as similar. Just pause this video for a while. Tell me how these triangles can be similar. So to prove that these two triangles are similar, you have to find or you have to show that two angles of triangle ACP are actually equal to two more, two other angles of triangle PDB. So you pause it and you check how these can be similar. Right. Now you resume this video and I will check this. Now here angle D and angle C are actually right angles because this line is parallel to Y axis. And this line is parallel to the x axis, they are perpendicular to each other, we know this very well. And here once again, now we have angle A and angle P are equal because AC and PD are parallel lines and this is a transversal. We already know many things about transversals. When a transversal falls on parallel lines, the corresponding angles are equal, the I mean the interior angles on the same side of the transversal are com common. Some of them is always equal to 180 degrees. So now I am taking the concept of this corresponding angle. These two are corresponding angles. So they are equal. So two angles of triangle ACP and two angles of triangle PBD are equal. Which means these two triangles are similar. Right now as you know the corresponding ratio should be equal. So which is AC by PD is equal to CP by DB which should be equal to AP by BP, right? Now, this is what we have. Now, let us write them. Now, what is AC by PD here? This is AC by PD. So, in place of that, I can write X minus X1 by X2 minus X1, X. Now, this is equal to, now check what is CP by DP. So, CP by DP is, this is CP and this is DP. So, you will have here Y minus Y1 by Y2 minus Y. Now, how much is PA by BP? PA is M1 and BP is M2. So it will be equal to M1 by M2. So this is the heart of this derivation. You have to get this. And the remaining thing is just simple calculation. You can get it as you know how to solve the linear equations. 
Now this is the this is the heart of this derivation. Right now we'll take that that value only. Now these three things are equal. Now we'll take two thing two two things at a time. Then we'll derive it. Now I'm taking here these two. X minus x one by x two minus x is equal to m one by m two. Now I'm taking this. These two are equal. Now here our aim is to calculate the value of x. Now we have solved so many linear equations or when we have a variable. Now here we have to take cross multiplication. So this will be become m2 of x minus x1 will be equal to m1 of x2 minus x. So let us apply apply distribution formula. M2 x minus m2 x1 will be equal to m1 x2 minus m1 x. Now we have to find the value of x. So keep the terms with which involve x on the left side. And transpose the other terms to the other side, to the right side. Similarly, bring this to the left side. Then we have m two x will be as it is. Now this minus m one x will become plus m one x, and this m one x two will be on the right side as usual. Now this minus m two x one will become plus m two x one. Here you can see x is common on both on in both the terms, so I can take out x. So you'll have m two plus m one of x will be equal to m one x two plus m two x one. There is no change in the right side. Now I want only x. So this m2 plus m1 is actually multiplying x. As we know the rules of transposition, when a term which is multiplying on the left side, when you transpose it to the other side, it will actually divide. So here you have x is equal to m1 x2 plus m2 x1 divided by m2 plus m1. Just to make it uh, look a uh, little uh, more attractive, I like m1 plus m2 here because we can apply commutative property of addition. So x is equal to actually m1 x2 plus m2 x1 divided by m1 plus m2. If the ratio is 2 is to 3, here you have 2 plus 3. So first ratio value is is multiplied by second x coordinate, and second ratio value is equal to the actually the consequent is multiplied multiplied with the first x coordinate. So this is how you can get the x coordinate of this point P. Now by taking these two values now, you can actually derive y. i am leaving it to you as an assignment what you have to do is take this and so take these two values as equal and you try to find the value of y i am leaving it to you as an assignment part so when you solve it what you will actually have is this is y you compare these two they are actually similar wherever you have x here you will have y that's all so the y coordinate is m1 y2 Plus m2 y1 divided by m1 plus m2. So like this, you can find the coordinates of a point which divide the line segment in the given ratio m1 is to m2. This is very very important formula in your chapter. So you watch this once again. You solve this once again so that it will be easier for you to remember, right? So whenever you have a line segment and there is a point P which divide the line segment in the ratio m1 is to m2. and you have to find the coordinates of the point this is what you have to do the formula is for x coordinate m1 x2 plus m2 x1 divided by m1 plus m2 similarly you will have the y coordinate just if you remember the x coordinate that's enough that's what i feel if you if you substitute the value of x with y then you will have the y coordinate that's enough it's so simple so in the next class we'll discuss some problems involving this formula this derivation is very very important so you practice this once again and you have to find the value of y as i told you previously and you have to post the derivation to me remember this formula you practice this you write it 10 times or 20 times so that you can keep in your mind then because this is a very very important formula remember the name what is this formula called section formula very good thank you